Heart. Wound healing is commonly divided into three phases, beginning with the inflammatory phase. Inflammation aims primarily at removing the injury-causing agent and limiting the extent of tissue damage as it prepares the wound environment for healing. Inflammation is manifested by redness, swelling, heat, pain, and loss of function. The phase begins with arterioles and venules near the site of injury constricting briefly. Then the vessels dilate, promoting congestion. An accompanying increase in capillary permeability leads to the movement of fluid into the affected tissue. Increasing viscosity causes the blood to flow more slowly and clotting occurs. Phagocytic white blood cells or leukocytes emigrate through the vessel walls into the inflamed tissue where the leukocytes engulf and degrade the bacteria and cellular debris in a process called phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is part of the immune mechanism to prevent an infection that would impair wound healing. Subsequently, the release of growth factors leads to the attraction of fibroblasts. The arrival of fibroblasts marks the beginning of the second phase of wound healing, the proliferative phase. During the proliferative phase, the focus moves to the building of new tissue to fill the wound space. Fibroblasts are connective tissue cells that synthesize and secrete collagen. They also secrete growth factors that induce the growth of blood vessels through a process called angiogenesis, while promoting endothelial cell proliferation and migration. The fibroblasts and endothelial cells form granulation tissue that serves as the foundation for scar tissue development. Granulation tissue contains newly developed capillary buds. The tissue is soft and pink, and because it is fragile, granulation tissue bleeds easily. The newly formed blood vessels are leaky and allow plasma proteins and white blood cells to leak into the tissues. The final component of the proliferative stage is epithelialization, which is the regeneration, migration, proliferation, and differentiation of epithelial cells at the wound's edge to form a new surface area similar to that destroyed by the injury. By the end of the proliferative stage, white blood cells leave the wound site, edema diminishes, and the wound begins to blanch as the small blood vessels become thrombosed and degenerate. The third phase of wound healing is the remodeling phase. It begins after about three weeks and can continue for six months or longer. During this stage, final scar tissue is being formed by simultaneous synthesis and lysis of collagen. Clinically, the scar becomes avascular. Scar tissue may achieve 70 to 80 percent of tensile strength by the end of three months. Wound healing consists of filling the gap created by tissue destruction, followed by restoration of the structural continuity of the injured part through three phases of healing. The inflammatory phase, the proliferative phase, and the remodeling phase.